Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today's video is very lengthy, so buckle in, you're in for a wild ride. In today's video, I'm making two card designs plus two envelopes, which could actually be turned into a card very easily using just one stamp set. Um, a lot of you have asked for more videos like this where I show you multiple ways of using the same stamp set. So I'm gonna try to incorporate some more videos like this in the future. So I'm gonna be showing you, like I said before, two envelopes and two cards, and I'm gonna throw in a bunch of techniques along the way. I've got some masking, some ink blending with stencils, some watercoloring with watercolor markers, and then lots and lots of prep based on card sketches. I'm gonna show you all the way from the very beginning from the sketches to the very end when the cards and envelopes are finished. And I'm gonna show you the sketches like to remind you along the way, because I do jump around quite a bit. Okay, so the stamp set that I'm going to be using today is from Avery L. This is the Peekaboo Pets stamp set. It came out a few months ago and it's absolutely adorable. I've had it in the back of my stash just waiting for the right opportunity and today is that day. So I'm gonna be using just four of the images and then two greetings. So these are the sketches that I come up with. I've got um, an envelope with a talk bubble with the animals underneath, like the animals are talking. I've got a circular shape with the animals along the bottom of the circle with a greeting kind of off to the corner. And then um, that one I'm not doing, I decided not to do that design. I've got an envelope there at the bottom where I've got a large kind of banner area and the animals are peeking out above. And then I've got kind of like four squares with each of the animals and each square. So those are the basic, basic sketches I'm gonna be using today. And because I plan to use my watercolor markers, I'm using Bristol paper. Um, everything I'm doing all the way up until I color the animals, you could do on whatever paper you'd like. But since I will be eventually watercoloring, I'm using Bristol paper. I'm gonna prep the envelopes first using the envelope punch board from We Are Memory Keepers. I know that I need to cut my paper to eight and a quarter, and I'm going to have the first scoring line when my paper's lined up at three and five eighths. So here's that punch board. This is actually the one, two, three punch board. Cut down that Bristol paper to eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. I lined up that left edge to five and th uh, three and five eighths, punched it, and then I'm going to use the score line A and this bone folder that comes with the punch board. I'm going to score that up to the very top. And this is going to be the basic like instructions or movements that you do when you're creating your, your envelope base. So after that, you rotate it and you line up that score line that you've just done before with the little, the far left little pointy thing coming out from the punch, if you can see that. And then you can score up in that same area again, and then use the punch at the top, and that's gonna take out a notch. You're gonna do that two more times so that each side of this cardstock is punched and scored, and then you have a perfect envelope, and it's made out of whatever cardstock you want. So because I'm gonna be doing some watercoloring with those markers, I'm using Bristol paper, and I don't think there's really any envelopes that are pre-made out of Bristol paper, so this tool comes in handy. Up at the top of the punch board, you've got these two other little corner punches. One takes a notch and the other rounds it. I'm using the rounding side just to round those sharp corners on the envelope. Okay, so I've got my envelopes prepped. Now I'm gonna prep my card bases. So each of these cards has a finished size of four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm cutting down my Bristol paper to be four and a quarter by 11 inches tall and then I'm going to score them so I know exactly how they'll be folded. So going back to the envelopes for a minute here, I'm just gonna fold down these flaps so you can sort of see how they're going to be assembled um, later on. These envelopes come together super quickly and if you wanna do any sort of mail art, I really recommend getting the envelope punch board or the one, two, three punch board from We Are Memory Keepers because then you can make your envelopes out of whatever cardstock you want or watercolor paper or whatever. It's super easy and after you've done one of these envelopes, it comes even easier easier in the future. So I'm gonna cut down some masking paper. I'm doing a ton of masking on these cards. And so I've got some masking paper sheets from Simon Says Stamp. 
This first one I'm prepping is the circle window for the card with the animals coming across the bottom of the circle. So I'm gonna make sure that circle die from Simon is centered just on that masking paper. I also have the nested talking bubbles from Simon that I'm gonna be using on one of the envelopes. And I realized that the little tail on the talking bubble I wanted it to be on the left side, like in my sketch, but this die cuts it on the right. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that I, when I cut my masking paper, that it's going to have the tail on the left. So I'm checking to make sure which side of this masking paper is the sticky side. And then I'm going to place my talking bubble die right behind it in like the way that I want it to actually be. And then I can flip that over and run that through my die cutting machine. And by doing this, I'm going to make sure that the tail is on the side that I want it to be on that masking paper so that I can have it over on the one side. I wanted it on the left side because the postage on the envelope will be on the right corner, and I want those two corners to kind of balance each other out. Now cutting that circle for the circle window mask. And then I'm prepping a bunch of strips of masking paper for the window card, the one with the four animals in the window. I'm gonna cut two strips that are a quarter inch wide. These are going to be those areas right in the middle of all four. And then I'm going to cut some half inch strips here as well. And those will be the, the four sides going around all four of these kind of window rectangular shapes. So as I was editing this video, I realized that the way I originally prepped this card base was really complicated and there was a much easier way to do it. So I'm gonna show you how to do this really easy. I just went and filmed this real quick. So the first thing you're gonna do is mark where the center of the card is and that's four and one eighth. And then I'm gonna mark an eighth on each side so that's the width of the quarter inch of masking strip that I have. I'm gonna draw two vertical lines. This is gonna help me line up that masking paper. And then I'm going to measure down from the top two and a half inches. And I'm gonna do those um, marks on the sides for the width of that masking strip, just like I did for the vertical strip. And this is going to give me a, a nice kind of centered, but a little more near the top of the card area. I've now got some cardstock cut to one and a quarter wide by one and three eighths tall. Put a little bit of removable adhesive behind that and I'm temporarily placing these onto my card front. And I'm gonna use these as a guide while I place the, these masking paper strips. So I've got one going horizontally and then I've got this other one going vertically. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple of the more wide strips that I cut out, these half inch strips. I'm gonna place that above, lining up across the top of those two pink squares. Then I'm gonna move one of the pink squares down so that I can line up the masking strip on the left side. This is gonna give me the perfect placement. And you can probably anticipate what I'm doing next. I'm gonna pull that one at the top down to the bottom so that I can line it up across the bottom with that strip. And the last thing to do is to put one more of those squares up at the top. And this is going to give me the right edge of all of this masking. So after I had all of this masking done, I was then able to put some additional masking paper just to protect those areas that were left on the card. I'm gonna do quite a bit of ink blending and I wanted to protect those areas. So here's what it looked like when I was getting ready to start my, my ink blending. But I'm gonna go ahead and apply those masks to the other card and envelopes. So I've got my circle window mask that's going on this one and I had a little trouble there and kind of bubbled up on one area but doesn't bother me. That shouldn't, shouldn't affect the masking at all. And then I folded up one of those envelopes just temporarily so that I could get placement of this talk bubble mask. Okay, so now I've got most all of my masking done here. I'm gonna go ahead and get into all of the stamping. There's quite a bit of stamping, but I'm only gonna be using four images, or four images and two greetings, actually. So here's that window card with the four animals in each square. I've got the, all those animals placed in my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool. And the, stamp, or the stamping ink I'm using today is VersaFine Onyx Black Ink.
I'm using this ink in particular because like I mentioned before, I'm going to be watercoloring over the top of these. And so I wanna make sure I'm using a waterproof ink and one that's really vibrant and gives me a really good stamped impression. And Versamark is that ink for me, or I'm sorry, Versafine is that ink for me and I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna create some stamped masks masks of all of these animals while I've got my animals um, inked up. I'm just using the residual ink left on the stamps because I don't need these to be super dark or anything. I just want them so I can cut them out later. I'm going to set those aside and continue stamping. Here's that window card, the circle window card with the three animals kind of at the bottom. And once again, I'm stamping the animals in that VersaFine Onyx Black ink. So I've got a a little bit more stamping to do. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the top bubble envelope. And I've just folded over one of the side flaps from the envelope so I can fit it in my Misty. And then I've arranged three of the animals at the bottom below that top bubble. I'm gonna stamp it in that same black ink. I'm using the same ink for all of these cards and envelopes today. And it gives me a really nice, uh, deep impression. Okay, for this last envelope, I realized I forgot one mask. I needed to create that rectangular mask where the animals are going to be popping out from. So I cut out a, an additional piece of masking paper that was three inches wide by one and a half tall, placed that on the envelope, and then stamped the animals near the top. In hindsight, I would have changed the placement of that rectangle. I would have brought it down a little bit because I wasn't thinking ahead to where the poster stamps would be. And so I think if I was to create this envelope again, I would have placed that masking paper rectangle a little bit farther down on the envelope, but not a huge deal. It's still gonna look real great once I have everything done. Okay, so I have just a little bit more stamping to do and that's the greetings for the two cards. And I'm using the talk bubbles from the stamp set. One says thank you and one says it's your birthday. And I'm actually going to trim those out later. I'm gonna set them aside. I've come back to my masking paper animals and I'm going to trim these out really carefully. And I caught this tip from someone I I unfortunately don't remember who it was, but they said, when you're cutting out masks of stamped images, try to not cut right on the outer edge like you would if you were trimming out the image to go straight onto a card. Instead, cut down right down the middle of that black line, and that makes it so that your mask will fit perfectly on top of those images that you've stamped, and it will also prevent any strange white gaps, if that makes sense. It just gives you a little bit of a better result with all of your masking. So I trimmed out all four of these animals, and now I'm gonna get into the ink blending, and this is where we get color, it's my favorite part. So I put down my craft sheet from Ranger, and I'm taping off the four sides of this envelope. I'm using some two inch wide masking tape, uh, or post-it tape, but you could definitely just use more of that masking paper. I'm using Distress Oxide inks for all my ink blending today. I'm using Seedless Preserves, Tumble Glass, Squeeze Lemonade, and Abandoned Coral. And before I get to actually ink blending, I'm gonna cover these animals with those masks. Those masks will protect the area underneath. It's gonna make it so these animals stay white until I can paint them later. So I've got all of those animals covered up and I'm gonna go in, into the blending. I'm using some Picket Fence uh, Studios, I think it's Picket Fences Studios, life-changing blending blender brushes. I always say that wrong. It's blender brushes, not blending brushes. And I'm just going around this area, adding that color in, making sure I have enough um, blending in between the colors to really get a nice transition. And this is going to be kind of almost like a rainbow effect about this. I made a shaker card using these um, same colors not that long ago, and I was in love with the colors, so that's why I'm using them again. I'm using the Large Dots stencil from Simon Says Stamp, and after I did that initial blending, I'm gonna do more blending over top using this stencil. I'm taping it in place, and you'll notice that the stencil does not extend to the full width of the envelope. So I'm gonna blend on one side and then pick it up, clean it off so I don't have any colors transferring weirdly, and then match up that pattern and tape it down again. This is gonna make it so I can extend that stencil pattern all the way to the other side of the envelope. 
So I'm going to go ahead and keep blending and adding more of that yellow over top and then that blue. And then I can lift up the stencil and you can see all that pattern underneath. I really love this part. It's like Christmas morning. So I'm going to peel up each one of these animals. And as I peel it up, I'm going to go ahead and place it onto the next card or envelope that I'll be working on. So I'm going to go ahead and place them directly onto that circle window card. And this is going to make it so that I can go immediately into the blending as soon as I'm ready. The last thing to do on this talk bubble envelope is to peel up the talk bubble mask. I'm going to take off these edges and then I can peel off that talk bubble and it's, it has a nice clean white area underneath. I think it looks so cool. So I'm going to set this one aside and I'm going to go on to the circle window blending. I'm going to speed through all of the ink blending for the rest of these um, cards and envelopes because it's a lot of the same thing. I did um, the, the, those same four colors on the blending and once I had the colors kind of down, then I brought a stencil in. So this stencil is from Erin Lee Creative. Um, this is the Hex stencil and I'm going to place it right over the top, tape it in place, and then blend over with those same colors. So at this point, while I was working on these cards, I realized there was quite a bit of ink collecting on top of these animal masks. And I was really crossing my fingers and hoping that I would get away with using these masks multiple times. And I think I was able to use them about three times. So I'm going to use them on the, the window card, the four animal window card. But then what you're going to see when I get to the final envelope, that there's a little bit of color transfer. So it's kind of, you're taking a risk by using these masks over and over again with oxide inks, just because the oxide inks don't dry really quickly. Like they'll stay on the surface of the paper a little bit longer. So since I was using these masks immediately after already being used, I did have a little bit of that color transfer. So there's the circle one. And I'm going to move on to the, the four quadrant window animal one. So I've added that pig mask for the very last mask. And then each one of these quadrants will be ink blended on its own. So I'm using some leftover masking tape that I've used on the other card and envelope. And I'm going to uh, ink blend each one of these individually. I'm using the same colors and I'm using two colors per kind of square um, of, in this design. So I've got the abandoned coral to see this preserves. Then I'm using squeezed lemonade to tumble glass. And then I'm going to use those same color combinations for the animals down below, except this time I'm going to um, make sure that the colors um, look okay. So if you're, the one above, I had the yellow in that top corner and the blue on the side. I'm going to kind of make sure that I don't have yellow on yellow at the center or uh, coral and coral at the center. I want those colors to be a little bit differing. So you can see how it's basically the same color pattern on each one of these, but because the way that they're arranged, you don't have the same color touching each other. Okay, so I'm taking off all that masking. And this, this card is almost ready to do painting, but I will have to do some erasing later. But I'm going to set it aside for now and work on that last envelope. So I'm using this stencil from Heffy Doodle, and I'm going to place the stencil directly over the top after I've already done some blending. I've brought in a different color. I thought this one would be kind of interesting to have a more neutral color palette. So I'm using Pumice Stone. And this is when I realized that the, the seedless preserves and abandoned coral that were on the pig mask were starting to kind of bleed into that Pumice Stone. So you will see a little bit of a ghosting or faint pink purple shade in that area but for the most part it didn't bother me too much. So I'm peeling up the mask and that's the area where you would put the recipient's address and then I'm going to go back to that window card and I'm going to do a bunch of erasing. I'm using this itty bitty eraser from Tombow. It's kind of like a mechanical pencil but it's an eraser and it's really great for erasing those lines. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into all of the watercoloring. Um, this video is very long. Thanks for sticking, sticking in there with me. For each one of these that have the animals coming up to an edge, I'm using some masking tape. And I've switched from masking tape or from post-it tape to masking tape because masking tape handles moisture. 
um, and you can reuse it too. Whereas post-it tape is like paper tape with adhesive on the back. And so the paper eats that water and then it can allow the water to seep underneath. So that's why I'm using two different types of tape. I had post-it tape for when I was doing the ink blending, which just had the uh, more dry inks. And then I'm using uh, masking tape for the actual watercolor painting. So, and as I paint each one of these animals, I'm going to paint the animal on all four designs. So I'm starting with the pig here and you'll notice that I am, I only have two cards with the pig actually, but I painted both at the same time, just kind of switching back and forth. So now I'm going to move on to the dog and I started out with like this brown shade, which I think in hindsight I should have kept, but you'll notice here in a minute when I get to adding some additional colors and shading that I do bring in kind of like a darker magenta purple shade and it makes the dog look a little bit more red, which I guess isn't a bad thing considering these cards and envelopes are so colorful as it is, but I think in hindsight, I probably would have switched up the color of the dog a little bit, but I do like how it turned out. Um, I just think I would have done it a little bit differently. For this window card, I did need to trace the edge of that circle. So I just used the, um, the backing release paper from that mask and I just traced around that circle. So here's where I'm going to bring in some of that kind of reddish purple shade and it gets even more intense because I switch co marker colors for the second one and I kind of like to have bringing in that purple. And so I'm going to go back to that um, original one and add this color in and it really intensifies it. I do kind of like how this purple gives it an unusual coloring on the dog. Um, it almost makes me think of those Andy Warhol paintings where um, you have like the four images and it had really, really bright colors like pop art. So it sort of reminds me of that. So I painted all of the dogs. Um, just adding in that shading and making sure I'm spreading it out. The thing you want to remember with these watercolor markers, whether you're using the ones I'm using today, which are the Zig Clean Color Markers, or if you use Arteza markers or anything that's kind of like a marker like this, the thing you want to remember is that the paper you're using, if you're using Bristol, it can't handle a ton of water all at once. So work in layers, um, like I'm doing here, I'm doing a little bit of a layer of gray, um, then I'm going to let that dry and I'll come back to it and add more on top. Just be conservative in how much water you use and you'll be just fine. And I like how these markers can react to be on top of this Bristol paper. I have used these markers on watercolor paper and they're okay. They're not my favorite. I like how they blend out on Bristol paper much more. So if you're having trouble using your watercolor markers, I really encourage you to try some of this Strathmore Bristol Smooth paper because it's so much better and those colors will blend out beautifully. Moved on to the little mouse. I did want to mention I colored all the cats, how I always color cats on my cards and projects because my two cats, Sophie and Daphne, are silver tabbies. They look exactly like the kitties on these, on these envelopes and cards today. So I add a little bit of shading, using a little bit of purple on that mouse. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add black onto the dog and mice. And that finishes up all of the painting. So I peeled up all the masking tape and I also prepped the greetings that are going to go on the card fronts. I'm getting near to the end of finishing these cards, which is hanging there is a little bit more to do. So I trim these out with my scissors and then I put some foam adhesive on the back of each of these talk bubbles. And I'm using some 3M Scotch foam tape. Just cut those down to the perfect size to go behind these talk bubbles. And I like how using that black against the really colorful backgrounds really makes it pop. So now I'm going to put the postage stamps on these envelopes. Um, these popsicle postage stamps, when you rub them, they actually smell sweet. They're like scratch and sniff. I think it's kind of cool. And on this other one, I'm using um, this heart quilling postage stamp from a few years ago. So now I'm going to assemble the envelopes. And these are super easy to put together. You just need a couple strips of adhesive. I'm using some, I think this is... Ooh, Imagine Crafts 
Express It Tape. I think that's what it's called. And you just put a little bit of adhesive um, on the bottom flap and you wanna leave the top, the, the very corner of the flap free of any adhesive because when you close up the flaps, that part will be exposed to the interior of the envelope. So you just save yourself a little bit of hassle and make sure you leave that area free. And you'll see when I fold it up, how that top corner on the bottom flap will not be touching the flaps underneath. So I'll fold that up and there we go. There's the envelope. And I just did that for the other envelope as well. And then my envelopes are made and ready for these cards. So I'm not gonna be doing any lettering on the actual envelopes or addressing them today. Hope you guys don't mind. But those are my projects for today. Thank you so much for hanging in there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Um, you can see more about all the supplies I use, the stencils, the inks, the markers, everything. You can see that down below in the video description or over at my blog in the supply section. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.